So a district court judge just halted the enforcement of an assault weapons ban and magazine ban, finding that it's unconstitutional under the Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you know that a ban on so-called assault weapons and magazines that hold more than 10 rounds is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. So if you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, SDI might be a good option for you. To find out more about SDI, you can visit the website linked down below. And thank you again, SDI, for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, a district court judge in Colorado just used the Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin to halt a city ordinance which banned the sale, transfer, and possession of so-called assault weapons and also so-called large capacity magazines. The case we're going to be talking about in this video is Rocky Mountain Gun Owners v. the Town of Superior. In this case, an Obama-appointed judge just granted a temporary restraining order, also known as a TRO, against the city. This TRO prevents the city from enforcing its ban on so-called assault weapons and also large capacity magazines because the city ban was found unconstitutional since it violates the text and history of the Second Amendment. And that was just outlined as the entire analysis under the Supreme Court's recent ruling in Bruin. Now, the facts of this case are as follows. The town of Superior in Colorado adopted an ordinance that went into effect on July 1st of this year. The ordinance regulates the possession, use, transfer, and sale of certain weapons within the town limits. The ban included a ban on the possession of so-called assault weapons unless the individual received a certificate from the Boulder County Sheriff's Office to maintain possession of the firearm. But the city ordinance did not just stop at banning the possession of AR-15 style rifles or so-called assault weapons. It also banned magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Section 10-9-20 of the city code defines the term large capacity magazine to mean any firearms magazine capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Section 10-9-20 states the term illegal weapon includes that definition of a so-called large capacity magazine. Therefore, section 10-9-40 of the city code makes it illegal to possess, sell, or otherwise transfer any illegal weapon, which includes a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds. So that is just some of the basics surrounding what the ordinance did and what is being challenged in this case. Now it did a lot more than that. It also restricted open carry within the city, but I think the main thing that a lot of people were upset about and are focused on as far as the ordinance is the ban on rifles and magazines. So Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and NAGR, or the National Association for Gun Rights, sued the city for its unconstitutional ban. In the complaint, they argued that this was a categorical ban on commonly possessed arms that are clearly protected under the Second Amendment. Then on July 13th, these plaintiffs, NAGR and the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association, filed a motion for a temporary restraining order and a motion for a preliminary injunction. Now, this is really important to understand what the judge just did in this case. A temporary restraining order, or a TRO, is a protection mechanism that a party can seek from a court. The standard to be granted a TRO is similar to the standard for obtaining a motion for a preliminary injunction, with the primary difference being the duration of time that a TRO is in place in comparison to a preliminary injunction. A preliminary injunction remains in force throughout the duration of the entire case, while a TRO, in contrast, is only traditionally entered into on an emergency basis and for a limited time of duration. TROs are granted in situations where there is an emergency, where significant harm will come if the court does not halt the state's conduct or the city's conduct until a full hearing can be taken place for a preliminary injunction. Now, there is one type of other injunction that a lot of people talk about, and that is a permanent injunction. A permanent injunction is what is issued by a judge when a case is finished. So once the judge issues their final ruling in the case, they can issue a permanent injunction. A permanent injunction bars some sort of conduct forever. So for example, you can permanently bar the city from enforcing an unconstitutional law. If the judge, after the end of this entire case, determines that what they did is unconstitutional, the judge could issue a permanent injunction and bar the city from engaging in that conduct. To obtain a TRO or other injunctive relief like a preliminary injunction, a plaintiff must establish first, a substantial likelihood of prevailing on the merits, two, irreparable harm unless the injunction is issued, Three, that the threatened injury outweighs the harm that the preliminary injunction may cause the opposing party, here the city, and four, that the injunction, if issued, will not adversely affect the public's interest. So in this case, the plaintiffs here, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and NAGR, sought a TRO and a preliminary injunction from the court to stop the city from enforcing their ban on so-called assault weapons, magazines, and the restrictions on open carry. 
And the big news that has happened in this case that's got everybody excited is that an Obama appointed judge, Judge Raymond Moore, granted the TRO on two aspects of this case. The order of the court was that it granted the TRO on the ban on so-called assault weapons and also magazines as well. But the court did deny the TRO in regards to open carry and the restrictions that the city had on open carry. Without going into depth and into the weeds on why the court denied the TRO for an open carry, uh, since residents could still concealed carry with a permit, the court here said that a TRO was not granted because they had some sort of access to concealed carry, so it wasn't an emergency basis that they need to stop this conduct. In granting the TRO, the court stated, the court is sympathetic to the town's stated reasoning. However, the court is unaware of historical precedent that would permit a governmental entity to entirely ban a type of weapon that is commonly used by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes, whether in an individual's home or in public. They went on to also state that the court acknowledges that the nature of this TRO has required it to issue an order without hearing from the defendants, the defendants there is the city, who may be aware of pertinent historical precedent. Based on the information before it, however, the court concludes that there is strong likelihood that the plaintiffs will be successful on the merits as to this provision. The court also noted that if a TRO was not granted, there would be irreparable harm to the exercise of constitutional rights. They stated, because this challenge involves a constitutional right, and because the court already concluded that the plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits, the court also concludes that the plaintiffs have established that they will be irreparably harmed if a TRO is not issued. Now, why is it important that an Obama appointed judge just granted a TRO in this case? Well, that is because the granting of a TRO using the Bruin standard shows that we are now headed in the right direction. If a court is granting a TRO, it is also likely going to grant a preliminary injunction and it also signals that the city here and the ban here in the city will likely lose this entire case. Remember, one of the standards for a TRO or preliminary injunction to be granted is a likelihood of success on the merits, which means that the court believes that Rocky Mountain gun owners, the plaintiffs here, are likely to win this case. Now in the order, they did defer the granting of the preliminary injunction until a hearing on the issue could take place, which is currently set to take place on August 4th. So right now they granted the TRO and on August 4th, they are going to have that hearing on the preliminary injunction and will decide what they want to do. Indications are that the court will likely grant the preliminary injunction unless the city can suddenly come up with some sort of historical regulation or restriction dating back to 1791, which serves as a justification for this type of ban that they are putting in place in the city. Now, one important thing that I want to note with this that I haven't seen anyone else really mention is that even if the district court granted the preliminary injunction on August 4th, the city can still appeal that decision. This mechanism is often referred to as an interlocutory appeal. The best way to understand this type of appeal is it's an appeal on an order by a court that isn't a final judgment on the case. Here, the granting of a preliminary injunction bars the enforcement of the ordinance during the entirety of the case, where a permanent injunction would be granted at the end of the case and would bar the enforcement of the ordinance forever. So the city can seek an interlocutory appeal on the district court's granting of the preliminary injunction up to the 10th circuit. So I understand that's a lot of procedural stuff, but it's important to understand where we are currently at with this case and what avenues the city has still at its disposal to oppose what is happening. But overall, this is a good win and a good sign for where this case is currently heading. If the district court granted the TRO, they will likely grant the preliminary injunction, which all signals that the court believes that the city will lose this case ultimately. This is one of the first times and first cases that we've seen a federal court acknowledge that the Supreme Court's command in Bruin of text as informed by history is really important and they cannot deviate from that. And because of that, they are halting this unconstitutional ban. So great job to Rocky Mountain gun owners and NAGR for this case. And I hope that there are many more victories to come in the future. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars, and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.